It's been an incredible session in Raleigh. Uh, we started this session, uh, as I've told you before, this budget was in serious trouble. Uh, and the one thing that I hold, uh, that I hold back to you, that I tell you when I was elected, um, I went to Raleigh and did what I told you I was going to do. But we balanced a budget in the state of North Carolina without raising your taxes. Was it difficult? Absolutely. Did we make cuts in areas that it was very hard to make? We wish we didn't have to make? Absolutely. But it's what had to be done in this state. For 140 years, we've been bulldozed into raising higher taxes and higher taxes. And you all heard the mantra, and they even put it in the paper and held their little rally here. You know, just a penny. It's equivalent of just $1.3 billion. That's all we need, just another $1.3 billion. That's 7% of the entire state's revenue that they were asking for, for us to raise taxes. So we let the tax expire. We put in a cap, small businesses. First $50,000 of income small businesses make is now state tax free. Yes, it's been a difficult process. But despite everything they've claimed when employment security numbers came out last month, government was still the largest growth sector with 16,000 government jobs added in the state of North Carolina. This is the bare to bone cuts that they've claimed, but that's the numbers from the Employment Security Commission. Absolutely unemployment's too high in this state. But it's our private sector unemployment that we have got to work in creating jobs in and not trying to feel, and it's difficult for us here in Western North Carolina, we're not trying to build a state based on government jobs because we see how it collapsed. We wrap this session up when we, November 7th, we're supposed to go back in for waiting on the federal courts to give us their uh, interpretation on redistricting, whether we've met those guidelines. We receive that on November 7th, assuming everything works well. That will be our 100th day in the legislature. We also did this in the shortest amount of time that could be done. The counties and local governments had our budget by mid-June. There's been years of waiting on July 1st when the budget begins. It's been September, October, even December before that budget's even been passed. <clears throat> yes, we moved quickly, and yes, we've done a lot... And when we went back this time, we established your right to vote on a constitutional amendment that says in the state of North Carolina, a marriage between one man and one woman is the only legal recognized union in this state. I think that's pretty simple. I think that's pretty common sense. I think it's evident of how far our courts have gone in activism that we're considering it, but there's no doubt it was necessary. And when you go to the ballot in the primary election, you got a lot of important decisions to make for local candidates, and I hope to be one of those. But remember that ballot. Because if we establish this in the Constitution, never can a state judge or the state legislature change the definition of marriage in this state. It would require in this state a vote of the people to change it. And that's why it's important to place that constitutional protection on it. We've got a lot of work to do on other constitutional amendments. They weren't ready in this session. I'll be clear on that. But we need to establish eminent domain in this state. The constitutional amendment ensure that local governments cannot take your land and your property for flippant economic development reasons. We're not talking about building a road or those kind of things. We're talking about they think a Walmart would be better on your property. And they're going to take it from you and sell it to them and develop it to them. That's important. We're working on some term limit legislation for leadership for the Constitution. There's several others that may come up that we're working on. We're not done with that area. But our budget area, we've bounced. <coughs> The information we're getting right now is that revenues are coming in ahead of expected. It's a good position to be in because I think we found a level of government operation. And now we can start making investments back in individuals. 
and give you back your tax revenue that this state is overtaxed. Because the thing they forget to tell you is that we have higher tax rates except for Tennessee sales tax in corporate, individual, and income tax than every state that borders us. Gasoline taxes. We're working on putting a cap on those to ensure that the formula the Democrats kind of put in and locked us into in July in January doesn't go up right now an estimate of another five cents a gallon. The balance. We're going to scale back on some road projects and some bridge projects to be able to do it. Uh, based on what we plan, but that's something we're very much focused on going into the next session. There's always banner back and forth between the House and the Senate. Uh, it's not unusual, and there's banner between the Republicans and Democrats. Uh, it's not unusual. We've said what we're going to do, but I can't tell you the biggest impediment there is the governor's office. I have never seen someone that is so difficult to negotiate with because they don't have a position. I equate it to nailing jello to a wall. I just won't even tell you where they stand. It's about where they can pick up the most votes and the most support. They played around with a major manufacturing company in the East asking the legislature for a hundred million dollar cash incentive to bring this company here. She played around with it to the point that we're being told now it's going to announce it's opening in South Carolina. This is our governor, and I don't think I have to repeat her comments on how she feels about elections and who should be elected. I will give you Senator Berger's comment on that because I think he summed it up best. I want to be absolutely clear on my position. I do not support moving the governor's election up two years in this state. <laughs> because it is time we make a major change in Raleigh. We have changed the legislature. We have a chance to change the executive. And I always, every group I'm speaking to because of how important it is, when we move to general elections, remember Justice Newby in that election. Right now we're facing a 5-4 Supreme Court in the state of North Carolina. And his seat is the one up for election. He is a conservative judge. He's often been opposed to judicial activism in his rulings. He's a man of faith. And so remember here when we come to the general election, I know we've got a lot going on and a lot of other people, you know, hear from and those kind of things, but, you know, I'm glad after redistricting that I'll be representing in the same congressional district now, so it's not trying to wave to others, but I've been working a lot in Rutherford and Polk counties, the new counties. I'm, you know, missing a lot of great people in Haywood and Avery uh, that are coming out of this district, but our core's still here. Uh, and so, been great changes in Madison County, and I fully expect that those will continue into 2012. So, again, anything that I can do for you all, please be in contact with me. Uh, I know it gets hectic right now when I'm back and forth to Raleigh and back and forth to everything, but I do respond, and I do get back in touch with people and hear what you need. But we're building a relationship here, not just to represent in Raleigh, but to change Madison County. Because this is one of those counties, as many of mine are, that have become dependent on those government jobs, those government aids. And it's difficult when the message may mean that we had to cut government and government services. But if we're going to continue as a state and we're going to be successful, that was necessary. And I hope we can move forward together and bring some conservative leadership to the county level here as well. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you.